When we hear the word economy, we tend to think about those involving money and organized on a national or international scale. But there can be an economy in a game, and more importantly, it can do a lot to dictate our behavior. The easiest examples to point to are board games, Monopoly being the obvious one because it, the economy in Monopoly actually involves money, but even Settlers of Catan has an economy that changes throughout the game. Now some role-playing games do have economies, but not everyone does, and it might be easy to make a mistake and believe that there's an economy when there isn't one. For example, experience points are not an economy, players don't meaningfully interact with them in any way, it's simply a reward. Likewise, to be useful for a game, an economy must require some level of management on the part of the player, the GM, or both. A simple example of a game economy comes from Everyone is John. Players have a resource which they use to bid for control of John. This allows them to be strategic, it allows them to decide when it is important for them to do so, when they don't want to, when they want to simply hold back and make use of their resources later. Something a little bit more complicated would be Kagamatsu. In this, it's the stat of the fear that everyone fears for the threat of the game versus the love that their character has from Kagamatsu. And if they want the ending to turn out at all positive, they have to carefully manage this. While in game, the economy will push them to risk more to lose more, as the case might be the old push your luck mechanic as we discussed before. Now Mouse Guard gives us a really interesting example. Players will put their character into harm's way and do things that will make the game more difficult for themselves to get checks. And what are these checks for? Well, they're, they're to accomplish their own goals during the player's turn. Because those turns, those checks, and their ability to accomplish their goals are really what make them able to do what they really wanted to as a character. So they have to put themselves in harm's way, and that's what the economy will do for that game. Now there are several things that game economies can do for a game. They can motivate the direction of action. They can offer players strategies rather than simply playing to what is best for them now. They can play for something that is best for them down the road by conserving resources, or they can put all their resources into one aspect and just to see what if they can make that work for them. Now, it can also make a game behave in a way that facilitates the sort of play that it was designed for. For example, Everyone is John is very player versus player and chaotic, and that is because of the bidding for control of John. Now, assuming you're not a game designer, you may be wondering why this is important. Well, the obvious example is that it is dangerous to modify the rules surrounding any game economy because they tend to be very fragile. It can also inform play, and we should be aware as a GM or a player that there are new strategies available when an economy is allowed to dictate how the game will play itself out. Links for Blackboards and Minute Games are on screen and below. Video replies and comments are very welcome. And if you're interested in playing a game that I've talked about, I would like to try to open this up on Google+. There is a link for the notes as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope that every game that you have is better than the last.